Welcome back. It's your girl D'Angelo Renee with the BMS Podcast, and today I have a special guest who is... Ryan Cobbins. <laughs> and we're going to talk to Ryan about what she does and why she's on the podcast today. So first, Ryan, what do you do? I play basketball for KU, um, and I'm also a student here. So yeah, student athlete. What are you studying right now? Uh, speech pathology. So a lot of people don't know what that is, but it's basically working with people who have speech impediments, maybe have suffered from a stroke and having to learn how to talk again, or even like people who have burned their throats from eating something a little too hot. So I work closely with, or I will work closely with like physical therapists and people like that. What made you want to get into that field? Um, actually my neighbor currently like at home in Kansas City, Kansas, um, went to a speech pathologist a couple summers ago and I helped him with some of his worksheets and I was kind of able to like see his progress over over a summer and you know after I was able to do that I was like I can kind of see myself doing something like that so that's kind of how I kind of got on that track I had no idea what speech pathology was before that but I'm thankful that like our our paths crossed and now that's what I'm gonna do okay okay so my next question you said you're from Kansas City, Kansas already. Um, mm -hmm. What high school did you go to? Uh, I went to Piper High School, which if you're from the area, it's right by the legend. So a small school in Kansas City, Kansas. What are some achievements that you were able to achieve during basketball at Piper? Um, I was a thousand point scorer. We went to the state tournament a few times, or I think every year that I was in high school, but we unfortunately were never able to to win a state title. But we won other um, championships throughout my uh, high school career. But those were probably some of the biggest ones, just like making those state appearances and then being a 1,000-point scorer. Okay. My next question is, when is your first memory of picking up a basketball? Um... I think my first memory of picking up a basketball was I played for Upward and I played like we had our games at this church down the street from my house. And I just remember um, my dad and I practicing like running out of the tunnel, like for pregame. And I remember doing that in the house. And then I remember the first time that I did it actually at the gym. And I think that's honestly a memory that I'll hold on to forever. Okay. Okay. <laughs> when in your basketball career did you realize that you could play at a very high level? Um, honestly, I had never really thought about it until I started playing with my AU team, Missouri Phenom, um, just because I saw all the girls before me, like, starting to play college basketball. So I was like, okay, this, this program that I'm playing for must be serious. You know, they're going to all types of different universities across the country. So I guess, you know, playing for that program kind of, like, opened up my eyes to me being a potential college basketball player. Okay. So coming out of high school, you're a senior in high school. How was that recruitment process? Uh, my senior year of high school, it honestly was a pretty laid back process. Um, I wasn't a power five caliber player coming out of high school. So I was talking to, you know, a lot of mid-majors in the area and all over the nation. But I would say that my recruiting process was honestly probably pretty laid back compared to most. Um, I had my select few requirements. I didn't want to really be close to home, and they obviously <laughs> had to have my major. But, I mean, yeah, it was pretty laid back. And I don't know. I feel like, you know, I made the right decision, even though I've been to a couple of schools along the way. Like, I wouldn't, I wouldn't change my story. Okay. So after recruiting process in high school, what school did you decide to go to, and why did you select that school? Uh, out of high school, I went to North Dakota State. Uh, my head coach there at the time was actually from Kansas, and he recruited a girl that I played with uh, my freshman year of high school. And so I had seen him in the stands. He was a familiar face to me. And then I think the year after that, he took uh, an assistant job here at KU. And, you know, we talked for a little bit. And after that season, he signed a contract with North Dakota State, and I think I was his second signee. Um, I went on a visit there, and, you know, I love the facilities, and I was familiar with some of the coaches that he was going to have on his staff. So I felt like it was going to be a great fit for me, and, you know, I really liked my time in Fargo. <laughs> so 
So at North Dakota State, kind of walk me through your freshman year and your experiences and what you learned. Um, I feel like freshman year is just a really big learning experience. I mean, you have to learn how to manage your time. You know, you're going to class, practice, like you have to you have to be able to do all of those things at a super high level. And, you know, it always feels like there's not enough time in the day. So I feel like time management was definitely probably the biggest thing I learned on and off the floor. Um, but I mean, you know, typical things that I think you learn as a college freshman, you learn how to be independent, you know, you start experimenting maybe in the kitchen a little bit. So just like, you know, life skills that you'll hold on to for the rest of your life. Okay. What was your moment in college? It could be in basketball or outside of basketball where you had a realization, like, I'm really in college. Like, this is serious. Uh, hmm. Maybe, you know, my freshman year when we played against our first, or my first Power 5 opponent, I think it might have either been Iowa State or Wisconsin. But, you know, that game to me just, like, felt so surreal because I feel like as a little girl, I always wanted to play Power 5 basketball, and just, like, coming out of high school, I didn't. So playing against, like, such high-level competition, I feel like that was my first taste of being like, okay, wow, like, this is for real. I'm playing college basketball. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, I think that's probably what, what did it for me. Okay. So then after that, North Dakota State, sophomore year, you're still at North Dakota State? Mm-hmm. Yep. And what did you learn from your freshman year that you felt like you improved on to your sophomore year? Uh, honestly, I feel like from freshman to sophomore year, I just kind of got more familiar with the league. I don't feel like development-wise, I made my biggest jump until sophomore to junior year. Um, and that just, like, comes with experience and, you know, getting stronger in the weight room and you know, learning what your coach wants and paying attention to detail. But that's probably, like, the biggest thing that I did notice is from freshman to sophomore year, like, how important details are in college basketball. And as a freshman, I didn't really care, you know. But details really do matter in the college game, especially defensively. So that's probably, like, the biggest takeaway that I have from freshman to sophomore year. Okay. So then after your sophomore year, junior year, where are you, where are you at? I was still at North Dakota State, and then as a true senior, that's when I left and went to my second school. Okay, so for sophomore year, you said that you learned details. So junior year, you were able to mm -hmm. implement those details, and how successful were you? Uh, junior year was a, a really good year for me. I averaged double digits. Um, I was comfortable with the offense. I was comfortable with my teammates, and now, you know, because of that time and experience that I had put in the past previous two years, I was able to kind of be a vocal leader for the, the underclassmen and kind of teach them the ways, you know, kind of being the person that I wish I would have had when I was a freshman. Mm -hmm. um, so that's probably the biggest thing. And then, you know, by then I was also more familiar with the league. I kind of knew other people's playing styles. So, you know, just coming in every day and trying to be consistent and, and be a really good teammate was my focus junior year and uh, to have fun. So then your senior year, you're still there as well. Mm -hmm. Is that right? So uh, my junior. There. Yeah, after my junior year, that's when I left. Okay, so you left yeah. your junior year. What yep. decided factor made you feel like it was time for you to go? Um, Honestly, I just wanted to get a taste of Power 5 basketball. Like I had mentioned, you know, I liked my time in North Dakota State, but I did feel like it was stunting my growth a little bit. Um, I just kind of wanted to see what it was like to – be a power five basketball player and what better way to do that than playing in one of the best conferences in the country which is the SEC so I took my talents to Alabama and played a year there how was that experience from jumping <laughs> from North Dakota first the climate change yes first first. and then uh -huh. how was the experience of jumping from like a mid-major kind of is it is the North Dakota mid major or low level? Yeah, North Dakota State's mid major. Okay, mid major to a big jump to Power uh -huh. Five SEC. What people call it to be is the fastest, like mm -hmm. it's the 
literally the fastest conference out of all the girls' conferences. They moved fast. Yes, yes. Um, I mean, it was a huge jump, and I don't think I realized how big the jump was until I had got there and I was actually in it. Um, I think the biggest difference from mid-major basketball to power five is just like the amount of work that you have to put in. Um, I feel like mid-major basketball is just, you know, you go to practice, you go to lift, and if you want to do an extra workout, then you can, you know, ask a coach if you want to do it. But at the power five level, you know, putting in extra work is 100% expected, like it's the expectation. And I think that was the, the biggest jump for me. And Playing Power 5 basketball, like, I feel like if you want to be successful at this level, you actually, you have to love the game because the time, you know, it takes out of your day is super demanding. And, you know, I learned that quickly. But also, like you said, it is one of the fastest conferences in the country. And mm -hmm. I learned that, you know, my first conference <laughs> game. And it's also probably the most physical conference in the country, too. So me being a forward, you know, I'm down there on the block with a lot of post players and that are a lot taller than me, but you know, it's a physical game, but playing in the SEC was fun. I mean, I never in my wildest dreams would have thought that I would have been guarding the Leah Boston and people like that, Angel Reese, but I did. And you know, that's also like a memory that I'll hold on to forever. You know, I turn the TV on and I see Leah Boston playing in the WNBA. So that's kind of a surreal thing. So with that, you said that you played in your first SEC game. Do you feel like that was a wake-up call to power by basketball that game? <laughs> I do. Um, I was getting pushed around a little bit, and I feel like, you know, at the mid-major level, I was the one doing the pushing around. But it definitely was a wake-up call, but it was also exciting because, you know, it's what I wanted for myself. And, you know, I, I had to learn quickly, you know, to make those adjustments and to actually box out and to – pay even more attention to detail than I was like in previous years because, you know, the athleticism and everything changes um, when you get to the power five level. So, but it was, mm -hmm. it's, it's a good experience. <laughs> so my next question is what advice do you have people that may have been in your position? Like they were at a mid major and they want more out of the game. They want to elevate themselves. Um, what are some things that you wish you would have known or some things that you would have wished you would have taken into consideration before taking the next step to transfer? Yeah, I think I just probably would have took a little bit more time to, to think about it. Um, looking back, I really liked mid-major level and I like power five basketball as well. But like I said, you have to be willingly, like, committed, and you have to really, you know, love the game. Um, so you just have to think about, like, if you want to put in, you know, that extra work that's required out of you and, you know, just little things like that. I mean, you know, as a basketball player, you don't really get breaks. Um, mm -hmm. Constantly, just the demand goes up, and I think you just have to think about – you know, all aspects of it. And mm -hmm. if you're happy where you are, then, you know, there might not be a reason to leave. But if you do, you know, want to get another experience at a different level, then, I mean, why not take that that jump? And that was the biggest thing for me is I didn't want to, you know, look back 10 years from now and be like, I wish I would have, you know, took this risk and tried something. So, yeah, just mm -hmm. do your research, make your decision for you. And at the end of the day, don't be afraid to take risks. Okay. Now, how did you get to KU? Because you were at Alabama and you decided to transfer again. Yes. Um, so it's my fifth and final year of eligibility. Um, I had been year. gone for four years. Yes, yeah, my COVID year. Um, but I had been gone for four years and I was like, you know what? Like, I've been gone. I kind of miss home, even though I never wanted to be home, like coming out of high school. But I just thought it would be kind of a cool way to end my story, uh, to be able to do it down the street. And, you know, now I look up at home games and I, my whole family is there in a section. And so that's something that I, you know, didn't have consistently over my past four years of college. And mm -hmm. it's mm -hmm. just meaningful for me to have Kansas across my chest for my last year of eligibility and you know, play with people, 
that I'm familiar with, like Samaya Nichols and then even the coaching staff. You know, I one of my assistants here was actually my assistant at North Dakota State. So it's been a pretty full circle, like, experience for me. But I think it's a, a really good way to kind of end my, end my basketball story. Okay. Okay, now with all you, like, kind of moved around a little bit further to the end, consistently at North Dakota State until further to mm-hmm. the end. Through all the time, you said a lot about basketball is very demanding of your time and what Mm -hmm. ways are you able to wind down or be able to kind of get a peace of mind to take a step away from basketball I feel like that's a really good question because it looks differently for everyone I feel like but for me Mm -hmm. I have to like come back to the apartment and kind of just close my door light a candle turn on the tv and just like unwind I mean I like to draw on color I like to write I like to listen to music. So I try to do things that like keep my mind off of basketball, you know, when I'm away from it, because I think that's the best way to kind of recharge is to be able to Mm -hmm. learn how to disconnect yourself like at a in a healthy way, you know, like, you know what you have to do tomorrow. But, you know, enjoying the time that, you know, you have your have to yourself to kind of recharge, be able to give your best effort the next day and to be able to do that for months and months and months and months so I think that's my biggest thing just come home and relax and just recharge my social battery okay okay now how in college what have you learned as far as balancing a social life and basketball and what ways do you do that um I think you just kind of have to make them both a priority I mean as a freshman I feel like I struggled to like find that balance and maybe I was making my social life more of a priority than basketball. And so it's important to basically ask for help if you need it. Like time management is hard, especially like at a young age. And so, you know, here in pretty much every university across the country, like there's resources there for um, to help you like with things like that. So I would say if I could go back in time, I would definitely probably ask for a little bit more help because I did struggle with like that time management piece because I wanted to like still keep, you know, my friends relevant, like a main part of my life while at, while also trying to like be successful on the basketball floor. Um, but it's hard. And it, I mean, it's still hard, especially, you know, playing power five basketball. Like I think it makes it even more difficult just because, you know, there's, hours and hours at a time that I'm away from my phone or by the time I'm out of practice I'm too tired to do anything so like I said just finding like that healthy balance of like being able to disconnect but I think it takes time so okay okay and now my next kind of serious ish question are you planning to continue to play after you graduate in like a league or something or you just want to get into your career field and get started with that um honestly I think I'm just gonna hang the shoes up and go to work um I think you know at the end of my career I'll be like satisfied with what I was able to accomplish and what I did during you know over the span of my career so I don't really have any aspirations to play professionally but I'll never say never but as of right now it's looking like I'm just gonna go to work (laughs) okay Okay, and you you already have your bachelor's degree, is that correct? Yes. So you'll be getting your master's? Yes, if I, yeah, like, I could choose to get a master's or I could just, you know, start out as a speech pathology assistant, which basically does the same thing. Um, so I'm kind of in the process of deciding of if I want my actual, like, speech pathology license or if I just want to be a speech pathologist assistant and go out in the field and you know, work with kids and stuff like that. So it's a decision I'm still trying to make. Okay. Yeah. Now for the fun basketball questions. First question. <laughs> <laughs> who's, winning the big, who's winning the Big 12 tournament? On the women's side? Mm-hmm. Well, obviously, I hope we are. But <laughs> I don't know. There's a lot of good teams in this league, and that's also something that I – didn't realize until I started playing in it. Like, of course, you know, Baylor's always, always good. Um, Mm -hmm. But just every night, like, the guard play in the Big 12 is probably at the highest level that it's ever been at. So 
I don't know. Like, Big 12 is definitely up for grabs, and there's a lot of time left in the season. So we'll just have to see when we get there. But obviously, I'm hoping we win the whole thing. Who do you think is going to win the ACC tournament? Ooh. They're packed. <laughs> they, are, they are loaded, yes. Um, I mean... I don't... It's- it might be. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> because I, I obviously am gonna say Virginia Tech, but Louisville is playing well, and so is North Carolina, even though they lost today. But like down the stretch, North Carolina, they are. You know, they go to the tournament year after year. So I don't know. One of those three, though. I think. I think they got there. Mm-hmm. Okay. Who do you think is going to win the SEC tournament? You think it's going to be another LSU versus South Carolina game? You think we're going to get there? Or you think somebody's going to upset somebody? What you think? I do think it's going to be LSU-South Carolina again. Um, and that game that they played earlier this week was crazy. Mm-hmm. So I do think it'll come back. I do think it'll come back down to those two. But, you know, you never know. So we'll see. <laughs> And, of course, I was going to ask about the Big Ten, but I'm pretty sure Iowa is going to win the Big Ten. Indiana was doing good, but I don't know. Iowa, yeah. Oh. I am picking Iowa again, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now, my next question is, who do you think will be in the final four at the end of the season for national championships? South Carolina, UCLA. See, finally, somebody picked UCLA. <laughs> People keep forgetting about UCLA. UCLA is good. <sighs> Who <He's> like, oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I really. I would like to say UConn. <laughs> and that's the first UConn. I think I think Gino can get it done down the stretch. And you know they've played in so many big games like they're used to that moment. And I might I <laughs> You got to put your uh, I'm. <laughs> She's like, hey. I'm I, real. I, <laughs> I might slide Virginia Tech back in there. Virginia Tech? So, uh, would you say, uh, I, uh, Virginia Tech, UConn, UCLA, and you said South LSU? Carolina. South, South Carolina. Carolina. Yep. Okay. okay. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> Now, my next question is, who is your top five NBA players all time? All time? Hmm. I mean, this is no order. No order. Um, this is actually hard. Um, Michael Jordan, LeBron, Kobe. Three. Uh, hmm. I'll put Shaq and Magic Johnson in there. That's a good, that's a, that's good. I think that's a valid list. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Now, my next question is, who's your top five WNBA players? Okay. Um, Tamika Catchings, Candace Parker. You know, I am a big Chelsea Gray fan. <laughs> Like, I love Chelsea Gray, and I also love Asia Wilson. And then... uh, (laughs) Oh, it's really between Sue Byrne and Diana Taurasi, but... Okay. I'll put Diana in there. Why not? (laughs) 
Sue as a sixth man, if we can. Uh, yeah, that's good. Okay. <laughs> now, if you had to build a WNBA team around you, you being in the starting five, who would you build around you? Chelsea Gray. <laughs> <laughs> Asia Wilson, mm -hmm. Candace Parker, and let's throw Sabrina in there. Sabrina, what's up? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. My next question is, even though you're going to work in your career field, do you still want to somehow give back to women's basketball in some sort of form? And if so, what does that look like for you? Uh, that's a good question. Um, I've considered coaching. So that's also like maybe, you know, another thing that I could pick up along the way. Um, I don't really know what that would look like, whether I like coach collegiately or even maybe like at a high school or maybe my kids like a U team. Mm -hmm. Um so I would be willing to coach, but you know, I also would be really willing, like, to referee. Like, I've officiated before. Yes. Them yes. Them make me mad. I know, but like, I've refed before, and it's harder than like what people think. Like, you like will make a call in your head, but you like forget to blow the whistle. I don't know, it's weird. But I would like officiate. Um, just like something to do on the weekends. So mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, okay. My next question is what do you feel like is Ryan's best part of her game? Hmm. Um maybe the fact that I'm like versatile like I feel like coach can kind of put me anywhere on the floor mm -hmm. and I'm able to guard anywhere on the floor um that's probably my biggest thing like I take more pride on the defensive end than I do scoring um mm -hmm. so just probably like my overall versatility like I'm not a flashy player on offense by any means I just am pretty like solid and fundamental but the fact that you know coach is able to throw me around if he feels like, you know, it's putting us in the best position to win, then I don't know. I think that that's, like, useful. The versatility. Now, what is <laughs> your weakness that you have in your game? Um, Honestly, since I've gone power five, I've noticed, like, a decrease in my, like, confidence just because, like, it's, it's hard. Um you know, being a starter and playing almost 40 minutes a night to like your role kind of completely changing and you walking into a program that's kind of maybe already established like who their starters are and their roles on the team. So that's probably like the biggest thing for me personally is just like the, the love or like the difference that I've noticed, you know, in my confidence. But I feel like, you know, as the season continues to go on, like I'm working through that and getting more and more comfortable, so. And I'm also, like, just trying to have fun because it is my last season of basketball, so that also kind of mm -hmm. helps me, you know, uplift myself, too, when I think about, you know, here in a couple months, like, I won't be doing this anymore, so just kind of making the most of it. Okay. Okay. What is your advice to high school kids about the recruitment process and how to make the best decision from them? Um... I would say take your time and I am the perfect person to tell you that because when I was a senior in high school, like I think May had rolled around and I still wasn't committed anywhere. Like, and that's a bit extreme, obviously, but like you just, you'll know when you know. And my mom always told me that during the process, like you'll get a feeling in your stomach and you'll know that that's the place that you're meant to be at. So just really taking your time and, you know, make it, the decision that's best for you and don't let NIL and all of these other distractions kind of get in your way and make you, you know, make a poor decision because you want a really big paycheck. Um, I mean, they say the grass is greener on the other side, but I think it's green where you water it. So just make the most of where you are and be big time where you're at, whether that's power five, whether that's mid-major 
whether that's D2, whether that's JUCO, like, it doesn't matter. And, you know, 10 years from now, no one's going to be thinking about that. No one's going to think about, you know, where you went and how many points you averaged, what you did. So just make the decision that's best for you. Okay. And with them bringing up NIL deals, um, how do you feel like the change went? Because you were in college while wow, NIL deal changed from one thing to another. What are some changes that you noticed within the game because of NIL deals? Um, I mean, I feel like the biggest change that I've seen is just like the amount of super teams that have been created. Um, you know, like especially at the Power Five level because they have the money to be able to kind of fund these players and have the resources to get them other, you know, NIL deals um, has just kind of changed. Like the overall, I don't know, the way basketball is viewed, but it's also been a really, a really positive thing for at least women's sports anyways, because I feel like social media and everything has done a really great job of kind of, you know, creating awareness around the sport. And now we have more viewers than ever, and we're playing on ESPN and other really big, you know, um, channels like that. So, I mean, yeah, that's probably the biggest thing, just the super teams that have been created and I don't know the amount of money people are making, which is crazy that, you know, people our age are making millions and millions of dollars and, you know, got shoe deals and all types of stuff that we never, you know, would have thought, but it's cool. Um, especially like for women's sports, um, to be able to see those opportunities as a female and to hope that it, you know, keeps growing for future generations. Okay. Okay. Now, have you got any NIL? I have, you know, at all of the stops that I've been at. Um, I worked closely with the city of Fargo when I was at North Dakota State. And then at Alabama, we kind of had a collective going on. And it's the same here at KU. Um, and then, you know, people will reach out to you, like, DM or, you know, will email compliance about stuff like that. But... You know, when you go to these bigger universities, it's kind of easier to get those kinds of connections, which is something that I'm also thankful for because, you know, who doesn't want to make a little extra money? So, yeah. So how do you decide for yourself personally, like, who to work with and who not to work with? Have you ever turned down an NIL deal? Um, No, I've never turned down an NIL deal, but I feel like... For me personally, like, it's never been, like, a difficult decision. I feel like, you know, compliance comes to me with, like, the best um, people reaching out possible. So um, anytime that, you know, people have reached out, like, wanting to work with me, I've been more than willing. And it's always been practical. So that helps mm -hmm. a lot. But it can be overwhelming at times. Um, and it makes you, you know, even more busy than what you already are. So that's the biggest thing. And once again, that is just time management skills. So, yeah. So playing in the SEC, you did play against LSU. Mm -hmm. Right. So now um, a coach at Ole Miss described playing against LSU as like showtime as a show. When you mm -hmm. played against LSU, did you feel like, how that coach kind of explained where she kind of went a little viral on social media. Like, did you feel like that? You know, when we played LSU, it felt very normal. And I only say that because they played us at home or we played them at home. Um, we didn't go to Baton Rouge. And I know being in Baton Rouge is a completely different story. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, so, you know, but... The people do, they do come to watch the show. That's how they're referred to. And I mean, it felt crazy just seeing all of those LSU fans, you know, in the stands and the amount of people we had at our game was a lot. But, you know, when you play in those big time games, like people do come out for them. And it's definitely like a, another one of those moments that I'll remember forever. Mm -hmm. So playing at Alabama, which is a mm -hmm. big 
football school, kind of a little tough about outside of basketball. How was that experience of going to Alabama games, like football games, um, different from the football games at like South Dakota, North Dakota? Um, so North Dakota State is actually a really big football school. Um, Mm -hmm. they won national championships too. Um, but Alabama, like that was probably like my first time that I was like, dude, I love college football. Like this is crazy. And so, you know, walking into like the dining hall and seeing Nick Saban, like who would have thought I would have been doing that? No, but the like tailgating experience and just like Bryant Denny in general, which is the stadium they play in is, it's crazy. And, you know, like that is probably one of the biggest things that I miss about being at Alabama is just like the football games. Cause you know, KU is starting to be good at football, but it's just a lot different than SEC football and just like the energy that's around it and everything. But you just, you gotta be there. You have to experience an Alabama football (laughs) game to know, but I feel like, you know, it's kind of going to be different now without Nick Saban, but maybe not. Maybe the legacy will continue, but you know, Nick Saban had a really, really big hand in all of that. So, but it was a good time. Okay. Now, since you're about to graduate, do you plan to stay in Kansas City or are you trying to get back out and leave? Uh, I can tell you that I will not be staying in Kansas City um, because home is always going to be home and I know my family is always going to be like, I know my family is always going to be here, but I know if I move like my mom is going to retire in three years and my dad can retire right now if he wants to. So it wouldn't surprise me if they packed their bags and just followed me. (laughs) Um, But no, I, I don't know. I kind of just want to experience the world a little bit. Um, Mm -hmm. So I don't really have any desire to stay in Kansas because I I know what it looks like. I know what to expect. So I think I'm probably just going to get on out again and come back to visit. So where would you go? If you could move anywhere in the world, where would you go? <laughs> anywhere Not, in the world? About, yeah, like no money. You don't got to worry about money or nothing. Just anywhere you want to go, you pack up your bags and leave. Where would you go? Probably like Greece or Italy. <laughs> like, <laughs> I just love the little vibe over there in Europe. I would definitely move to Europe. Okay. Like for sure. Yeah. So would that being said, where has the furthest place basketball has taken you? Europe and Italy. I went in August. <laughs> <laughs> and I just was like, this is so cool. Like, the people here are so nice. There's so many things to see. And it's just so different. Like, their food, everything, like, the way they get they around. They said the water tastes different. Is that true? Yes, it does. It does. Everything tastes different. Like, the way, like, Italians cook their noodles is so different. Like, it's kind they're kind of hard still you know like here we cook them like al dente or whatever and they're chewy Mm -hmm. and soft like in europe Mm -hmm. the noodles are still like kind of hard and crunchy so it's just different and i feel like they just live a lot simpler than what we do so how was it playing overseas (laughs) it was good but it was different um i feel like we are (laughs) Very privileged over here because let me tell you, the gym we played in was hot. No AC. (laughs) (laughs) No AC. The floors were not like getting swept or anything like that. So it was pretty slick in there. And I don't know. It just, it just was different, but it was a good experience. And, you know, I am grateful though to have air conditioning and stuff in our gyms because it was hot. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, now I'm going to ask you a little bit questions about your teammate. Who has been your, like, best shooter you ever played with? Hmm. It's going to be a tie between Aaliyah Nye at Alabama and Holly Kerskeeter here at KU. Like, snipers, for real. Like, every time they shoot the ball, like, I just run back because I know it's going in. <laughs> <laughs> and who has been the best point guard you played with? All the best point guard? Mm-hmm. Um, Hannah Barber. She was my point guard at Alabama. I just feel like it was the first time that 
I played with a point guard who knew where all five people were supposed to be on the floor. And she just was like the true definition of a, of a floor general and would wait for you to get to your spot and will point to you like where you need to go and just like didn't really care about what people thought of her. And I feel like that's a really like big characteristic that point guards have to have. Like you have to be willingly or willing to kind of boss people around and run the show and not really, you know, care what other people think of you because you're you're trying to do your job. So definitely Hannah mm-hmm. Barber. And who has been just a really good teammate? Not the best player, just a really good teammate for you. Someone that is like really good on and off the court, cheering for people on the bench, just a great team. Um, probably Carly Weathers, which was also one of my teammates at Alabama. Um, she was a freshman when I was there, but just like the contagious energy she brought every day, whether, you know, she was playing in the game or she was sitting on the bench. Like, I feel like she was just a really good person to be around on and off the floor. And she was just kind of steadfast in who she was. And even as a senior, like I told her, you know, before I left that she inspired me every day to be a better person. So I think that that's a really you know, special characteristic to have, especially at such a young age, so. Okay, okay. And my next question is, who has been a player that you played against that gave you, that you were, like, the best player you've ever played against that was, like, really hard to guard and you felt like they just gave you trouble? (laughs) Um, Probably Rakia Jackson at Tennessee um okay I I love Rikia's game like when we stepped on that floor and she was out there and I was out there I was like oh this girl is a pro and that was like the first time that I had ever like said that because you know I was playing mid-major basketball and you could just like tell like her movements and like her decision making but that was definitely the first time that I was like she's nice like this is crazy but you know I played Tennessee before I played LSU before I played South Carolina, before I played all these other teams. But Rakia Jackson was definitely the first person that I was like, yeah, like, this is a pro. <laughs> okay, okay. Um. So this is my final and last question. What has been your best basketball memory ever? You know, probably last year it was my first time ever going to the march madness tournament and i feel like that's something that like all young hoopers dream about and the fact that we were you know picked to go and we actually got to play at uconn and so playing on uconn's floor and like seeing the university like is also something i feel like at least all like girl hoopers you know dream about and so to see like all those banners up in the gym and to know that you're like just playing in such a rich like history environment I feel like that that was a super surreal moment for me and so I don't know that was just a super cool experience like being able to go to the tournament and like playing at one of the you know most historical women's college basketball gyms in the country like who would have thought yeah 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 so with that I know I said my last question how was selection Sunday your first ever selection Sunday it was good. We were nervous. Um, we had just actually lost to Kentucky the first round of the SEC tournament. So we didn't really know what to expect. Yeah. So, you know, our region, because we, you know, you can keep up with like bracketology or whatever throughout the year. Mm-hmm. Um, so we were doing that and we noticed, you know, our region kept jumping around. We were thinking we were going to be in Utah's region or Virginia Tech's region. And so we really didn't know what to expect, but You know, we were all there in, like, the football film room that Alabama has, and we had it up on the super big projector, and we had a really good time, and we just waited for our name to be called, and they called our name, and, of course, I was recording it on my phone because that's a core memory, (laughs) but, um, no, it was a lot of fun. It was kind of nerve-wracking because, like, you don't know what to expect or who you're going to play and all that type of stuff, but it it was a really good time, though. Okay. And what final message do you want to say to people out there who may look up to you or who may want to play Power 5 basketball and currently at a mid-major, just young girls who are playing basketball and want to play at a high level like you have done? Um, Just follow your dreams and 
do whatever you want to do. Um, don't do it for anyone else and make the best decision for you, whatever that looks like, whatever level you decide to play at. Um, and like I said earlier, don't be afraid to take risks. Um, things happen, things change, and and that's okay. And also, you know, the grass is green where you water it, like I kind of said too. And, you know, one day the ball will stop bouncing. So, you know, don't be too hard on yourself and just be a good person because we need more good people in this world. But be sure you're having fun and, yeah, just just enjoy the little things in life. Thank y'all for watching. Thank yes. you, Ryan, for coming on here and talking. This is a great interview. Ryan dropped some gems. And I want you guys to continue to tune in to more episodes that are coming with the women's basketball segment. We have Ryan on here, currently playing at KU. We wish her luck and success on her final senior season. And all the happiness in the world. And like I said before, I appreciate you for coming on here and talking to me. And yeah, I'll be back with more content. Please like, comment, and subscribe. And also, I'm going to put Ryan's socials down so you guys can follow to see what she's doing in her senior season and how she ends out. And just wish her luck, y'all. So yeah, peace. <laughs> <laughs>